If you were to ask a stranger to name a luxury watch, chances are they would say, Rolex. However, watch collectors are aware that there is more to the luxury watch market than just this particular brand. Despite this, for many people, the name Rolex immediately suggests a high-end, designer watch. The founder of Rolex, Hans Wilsdorf, was aware of this and came up with the idea of creating a sister brand that could benefit from Rolex's reputation for quality. Thus, Tudor Watches was born as a little sister to Rolex but eventually established itself as a respected brand in its own right. Through this journey, Tudor evolved from relying on the Rolex name to standing independently as a strong brand. Today in this video, we will talk about the unspoken secret history of Tudor watches. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on anything. Hans Wilsdorf had a clear vision for Tudor, to establish a watch brand that offered affordability without compromising on the reliability and trust associated with Rolex. He aimed to create a timepiece that would maintain the renowned dependability for which Rolex was known, but at a more modest price point. Wilsdorf's ambition was realized, leading to an extraordinary journey for Tudor. It is rare to witness a globally recognized watch brand develop its own more affordable model, making Wilsdorf's accomplishment all the more exceptional. In February 1926, Philippe Huther, a watch dealer and maker, registered the Tudor trademark on behalf of Hans Wilsdorf. By 1932, the first Tudor watches were introduced to the Australian market, displaying a distinct appearance that differed from the bold timepieces we associate with Tudor today. These initial models were characterized by slimmer and smaller designs, often featuring rectangular faces. Some even bore both the Rolex and Tudor names on their dials. While Tudor is now renowned for its precise diving watches and chronographs, in the 1930s, Australians recognized them as elegant dress watches. Encouraged by this early triumph, Wilsdorf acquired the name, the Tudor, in 1936 and incorporated the Tudor Rose into the brand's logo. The Tudor Rose, a traditional heraldic flower of England associated with the House of Tudor, was chosen to convey a sense of regal luxury. By adding this symbol to Tudor's design, Wilsdorf established a standard of opulence that combined strength and grace. In 1946, Wilsdorf recognized that Tudor had reached a point where it could establish its own distinctive presence. Consequently, he registered the company Monter's Tudor SA in the same year. Shortly thereafter, Tudor embarked on specific advertising campaigns that emphasized the blend of strength and grace offered by their watches. An early advertisement boasted about the precision accompanied by a slim design, appealing to potential wearers. By this time, Tudor watches already incorporated luminescent hands and occasionally featured a red second hand, laying the groundwork for the distinctive aesthetics that would later become synonymous with the brand. In 1947, Tudor introduced the Tudor Oyster, marked by the release of the inaugural Oyster model, reference 4463, which featured a 34mm Oyster case. What set the Oyster case apart as truly exceptional? Inspired by the protective shell of an Oyster, the Oyster case stood as one of Rolex's remarkable innovations. A screw-down case back and rubber-lined gaskets effectively shielded the internal mechanisms of the watch from water. The only remaining vulnerability was the crown. Rolex developed a winding crown that securely screwed down against the case, sealing off the last potential entry point and creating a genuinely waterproof timepiece. Tudor drew closer to the introduction of one of its most iconic watches, the timepiece that solidified its reputation as a genuine alternative to Rolex, the Tudor Oyster Prince. By emphasizing both the personal endorsement of Wilsdorf and the rigorous testing undergone by the Oyster Prince, Tudor conveyed a powerful message about the watch's exceptional quality and reliability. During the 1950s and 1960s, Tudor solidified its position as a reputable military and sports watch brand. Notably, in 1952, the Royal Navy selected 26 Tudor Oyster Princes as part of a groundbreaking British scientific expedition to Greenland. The French Marine Nationale also recognized the precision and durability of Tudor watches, making them their preferred timepieces and even collaborating with Tudor in the development of diving tool watches. In 1954, 
Tudor introduced the Oyster Prince Submariner, an impressive waterproof watch capable of withstanding depths of up to 100 meters. Tudor pushed the boundaries further in 1958 with an enhanced version, offering water resistance up to 200 meters. Additionally, in 1964, Tudor produced a specialized Oyster Prince Submariner tailored specifically for the United States Navy. Tudor's prominence continued to soar throughout the 1970s with the launch of its first chronograph, the Oyster Date. This timepiece featured a manually wound Valjeau mechanical caliber 7734 and stood out with its sturdy 39mm case. Equipped with two counters on the dial and a tachymetric scale on the bezel, the Oyster Date had a robust and utilitarian appearance, distinguishing it from many of its contemporaries. The iconic Tudor snowflake hands also gained increasing popularity during the 1960s and 1970s. At this point, Tudor had established itself as a well-respected brand with its own lineage and reputation. However, the future held a period of relative silence for the Tudor line. Despite experiencing success during the 1960s and 1970s, Tudor had yet to reach its ultimate triumph. Demand for its models dwindled, leading to a period of decline where Tudor ceased sales in the UK, America, and Japan by the 2000s. However, a turning point arrived when designer Davide Serrato joined the company in 2005, heralding a courageous new era for Tudor. The No History of Tudor would be complete without mentioning the Tudor Heritage Black Bay, first released in 2012. The Tudor Heritage Black Bay immediately called to mind the iconic Oyster Prince Submariner with its luminous indices and classic snowflake hands. Yet it was a fascinating watch in its own right, updating the classic Oyster Prince for the modern wearer. No wonder it won the GPHG, Grand Prix d'Horlogerie de Genève, Revival Prize in 2013. The Black Bay wasn't the only new addition to the Tudor line. The Tudor Ranger offered a minimalist stripped-back look that honored Tudor's military heritage. With a strong focus on performance rather than looks, the Tudor Ranger was an understated go-anywhere model. Meanwhile, the Tudor Heritage Advisor brought Tudor's Vintage Advisor Alarm model back to life, in a reliable watch with two pushers, an oversized crown, and of course a mechanical alarm. In conclusion, the remarkable journey of Tudor from its inception to its resurgence is a testament to the vision and perseverance of its founder, Hans Wilsdorf, and the unwavering commitment of the brand to delivering timepieces that blend reliability, affordability, and elegance. With a rich history rooted in innovation and durability, Tudor has evolved into a renowned name in the world of watches, offering exceptional craftsmanship and design. We hope you enjoyed this journey through Tudor's captivating story. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights and updates. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to sharing more exciting content with you.